My knees are groaning. Showing the crates? Is that what's happening here? Yeah, you want to show off all of the work you've been doing? So there, okay, yeah. So wait, 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 say hi to Game Lab first. Hello, Game Lab. Welcome to Adepticon Prep crate episode. Uh, so we went through some series of crates. The first one is made out of MDF and we yeeted it at a ramp and the wheels just instantly broke. But that was version one. Okay. So then we had version two, which is some of these that you see right here. Uh, if you were at Adepticon or ReaperCon last year, you would have seen this version uh, 2. It has some features. Grab a, uh, a lid over here. So the way that we're doing it now is the front side is going to be customer facing side. The back side there is overstock to refill. Um, all of these 2x4 crates have lids magnetic latches and then we strap them up and then strap them onto the vehicle at ReaperCon, we took grid wall sections which you can see our old grid wall there took a piece off put it sideways mounted it on the sides of the crate and then we have basically like whole game ecosystems dlb we have some modern terrain then we get into lunar we get into demon ship we have the Hemetsu crate and the Fsega crate. These bundles are some kind of unique things that we're offering at Adepticon. They're very limited, like eight to 10 of each one. Essentially, if you wanted to get into the game like Hemetsu, this gives you terrain, miniatures, the book, tokens, a little bit of everything. Uh, you just pick this up, take it home, throw it in your suitcase. And that's like, we're just testing that. Right? Yeah, yeah, so they're limited. We're gonna see how people like them. If you just want to buy the books, we'll have the books. If you just want to buy a piece of terrain, we'll have some terrain. If you just want to buy uh, a Kamainu, we'll have those as well. About two years ago, we took these plastic buckets that all shattered. So that's, that's not suitable for anything heavy. Right now it's just holding some extra bags, which is fine. There's also like a bunch of them up there. Yeah, so those all started breaking and shattering and it just wasn't viable. It wasn't viable to have, you know, a limited amount of crew unload all of that, take them out of the boxes, set them up, display them. Um, with the amount of miniatures that we have now, it's the same sort of thing. You know, even if we brought all of these uh, in a bag, we'd have to... Put the, put the, put the. So you basically developed our own, like, shipping palletized system thing yeah but we didn't take that form factor and have point of sale crate uh all of these crates the internal wall can be moved back and forth and then you can do things like here on the back um same thing none of these are glued but we have our point of sale system there's no money in there we're poor. uh we have bags we have little bags for minis little bags for a kit or two big bags if you're doing bundles then we took okay well first the display plant okay so this is the display plant we do this at adepticon the display plants so boom there is a demo table it's actually demo i broke that we'll have to fix that <laughs> pull out drawer that has a bunch of reaper con little bow ties so if it's like, hey, let me show you Don't Look Back, and I can have my things here, and I can show you the little interaction. Uh, so that's the display case. case. Two by two, same thing, has a lid, magnetic latches. I now have made a two by two retail shelf. So we have two shelves in here, uh, three slots for miniatures. We have a grid wall in an H formation. This is going to be displaying our mats, which are always a real headache to... Yeah, turns out mats are like very tricky to sell at conventions. Uh, and then in the back of it, we have mat storage. So if somebody is like, ooh, I love this ocean mat, I can be like, okay, cool. Money, please. Now we have mega plates. Well, what so, a chunk. This guy doesn't fit through residential doorways, unfortunately. So this is just for conventions. Um, does have a pull-out shelf that's currently drying from paint, so it's not there. 
massive shelf to come out to give you demos. This door only fits this crate because it's a little locker, but it fits up to three three by three tables, depending on the height, like that Hemetsu one over there. We have the ability to just put the table right on top. Boom. And now we have up to a 12 inch tall table securely right in on top has about an eighth inch of room on the outside and you have tables and terrain space underneath and you have a massive pull-out demo drawer um pretty best top monster plinth right there there is one more crate last crate man everything's so messy right now this is the one crate that i really like botched could you say it's a crate <laughs> uh well yeah i mean i guess not but so we have these display cases which are always just like a real headache to move so i made this kind of like a frame looking dolly it was supposed to fit we uh are the custodians of this case which is sean sutter's the relic blade and we haul it back and forth to adepticon form it was supposed to fit our three cases and sean's but i flubbed the measurements so everything is you you unload the truck fully, take it out to the booth. Once these get uh, taken off, our unused lids and the big old massive lid for the three by three will get put onto this and strapped down. And then this rolls back to the truck right. and everything else stays in the booth. Everything has to carry the materials, display the materials and stand up to shipping the materials. So that's kind of been like zeroing in on the purpose of the crates at this point. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Bye guys. See ya. See you the other day. I'm gonna go home too.